fake news has been a term that has been used by absolutely everybody and has been all over the media since even before the election of Donald Trump. Now, one of the criticisms that has been thrown out there was the supposed complicity by Facebook in these fake news stories. Why didn't Mark Zuckerberg or, you know, the company Facebook do more to squash these stories? And I think it's really far more complex than they're actually making it out to be. Now, uh, now Mark Zuckerberg has come up with an official statement regarding those fake news stories that have appeared on Facebook as well as every other social media site. Of all the content on Facebook, more than 99% of what people see is authentic. Only a small amount is fake news and hoaxes. The hoaxes that do exist are not limited to one partisan view or even to politics. Overall, this makes it extremely unlikely hoaxes change the outcome of this election in one direction or another. I think that's probably not true. I think fake news had a significant impact on this, on the whole recent U.S. election. Now, uh, according to a study that I heard about on CNN that I, for the life of me, I cannot seem to find an actual link to, leftist news sites, which I would redefine as being liberal, actually had half the amount of fake news stories that conservative or right-wing news outlets actually had, meaning things that were, which they define as being untrue claims, like certain people having been killed by Hillary Clinton, just to name one example. But I think the problem is, how do you really define what fake news is? I mean, we can go with a really simple definition of claiming something that happened that didn't actually happen, and then promoting that as news would be a good definition of fake news. But where do you really draw the line? Because a lot of what is classified as fake news are interpretations of, invent of events that have taken place or particular viewpoints. Uh, Breitbart is a very good example of that. They have a very incorrect view of a lot of things that happened, yet that does not necessarily mean the things that they say happened didn't happen. But so you see where I'm going with this. Where do you really draw the line? It can actually get pretty complicated. It's easy to say something that is an outright lie would be fake news. But at what point does it become a lie? Because opinion can vary and interpretation of events and explanations for events can vary wildly. That is not to say that Breitbart hasn't put out things that are absolutely false. I'm just saying the whole idea of trying to define fake news can be as difficult as trying to define terrorism. I mean, there would be a great deal of people who would consider myself to be fake news. Although I don't list things that didn't happen, the interpretation of them would be seen as fake. Like any criticism of imperialism to someone who's right wing or even many liberals, imperialism just doesn't exist because they don't like the idea of it having happened. They don't deny that Iraq, Afghanistan have been invaded, but they deny that there's something systemic within the system itself that, that causes it. It's just some bad leader that did it. It's not a part of capitalism itself. In no way the profit motive or the drive for the accumulation of capital, spheres of influence, access to markets, etc., could possibly cause a country to invade another. So you see, just from that simple definition, how difficult it can be to really quantify what is fake news. And for Zuckerberg to say that 99% of what people see is authentic, I would like to know how he came to that. I'm, I'm sure this is probably just an expression that he used, like, oh, there's like the odd thing that's not true, but basically everything else is true. But I don't think that he can really claim that fake news didn't have an impact on this election. It, it very well did. But I think in the end, it's really hard to blame him for all the fake news that goes through social media, and uh, particularly why Facebook itself is being singled out as opposed to Twitter or Tumblr or other forms of social media. I mean, you can't have people sitting there 24 hours a day deciding what's real and what's not real because that in itself is a very Orwellian kind of problem altogether. Do you really want Mark Zuckerberg to decide what is and isn't real and can be posted on social media? I think that's a frightening idea in itself. 
the, the point is, or the point that I would like to make, is that free speech is complicated. If you allow people the freedom of speech, you're going to get all the kooks that go along with it. You're going to get biases that go along with it. Because there is no real way to just completely control speech like that. You, there's there's a, a filtering device that all societies have, whether that be an ideological or a physical one, isn't preventing certain ideas from being promoted in the media. But it is a very complicated situation and one that cannot be solved by simply blaming Mark Zuckerberg or blaming any other social media. The only real people who have any responsibility for fake news being perpetuated is the people who perpetuate it. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.